I'm Philip Kaluza. Uh, I want to talk now a bit about um, our system for multi-arch or actually I don't want to talk so much about our system for multi-arch but a bit more uh, about the way we, we think and discuss about it. Um, yeah, I'll first repeat for those that are not clear on the details how uh, Multiarch currently is set up. Uh, some problems that um, have cropped up with that, and then what I want, to, how I want you guys to think about uh, this kind of problem. Um, I'll uh, edit a little part about some some recent discussions that have been going on here at uh, DebConf. Um, and yeah, then the uh, basically I, w uh, I want to uh, open the discussion about um, yeah how do we approach this in the future? What problems are there still to be solved? Which is basically the topic of the following buff. So when we if we run out of time, just stick around and Wookie will take over and uh, in an hour. <laughs> And uh, then I think we will have enough chance to collect all the, the problems and ideas that are floating around currently. Uh, I talked about that uh, this morning, so just uh, really quickly. Uh, um, I'm a freelancer based in Berlin, uh, studied informatics. Now I'm uh, doing IT consulting and a bit of teaching uh, of informatics also. Um, yeah. Let's look at uh, what we currently have uh, in terms of multi-arch. And um, this is uh, basically a stripped-down version of the, of the multi-arch spec that uh, Steve and, uh, yeah, mostly Steve pushed forward and <laughs> a bunch of others uh, have been discussing since, I think, 2004, right? Uh, so um, this... Uh, has been a topic at, at my last uh, DebConf in Edinburgh, at least since then, I know. Um, the spec basically says, uh, yeah, we have um, three possible annotations for a package. Uh, Multi-arch same, which says something about the, um, the package is co-installable with itself and um, must be used to satisfy dependencies from packages that have the same architecture. Yeah. not uh, dependencies of different architectures, uh, packages. That's uh, what the same stands for. Multi-arch foreign packages um, are not actually co-installable with, with themselves. They know about multi-arch stuff, um, but they um, export something that can be used by packages of a different architecture. Then we have the uh, ominous multi-arch allowed that allows reverse dependencies to to annotate actually the depends fields. And we have a, a bunch of problems we've been phrasing in, in terms of these three categories. Uh, also from the multi-arch spec, there's uh, really close to that, I found these two sentences. Um, which, which I want to quote here. If a package is de declared multi-arch foreign, preference should be given to a package for the native architecture if available. If, it's, if it is not available, the package manager may automatically install any available package, regardless of architecture, or it may choose to make this an option controlled by user configuration. Which is a nice sentence for a technical spec, but it really, really makes my head hurt. <laughs> 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 and yeah, uh, in for allowed we have the <laughs> in the definition. This value exists to prevent any packages from incorrectly annotating dependencies as being architecture neutral without coordination with the maintainer of the dependent on package. So, what this actually means is we wanted to allow uh, packages. Um, to declare this this information on the dependencies that they're declaring. But we were afraid to do so, uh, and it might have broken our archive. So 
we have this flag that says uh, my reverse dependencies are now allowed to do something fancy. Um, how did we, we get there? Well, we were basically just trying to solve allowing multi-arch uh, and doing a seamless transition of the archive while doing that. Yeah. And allowing multi-arch, of, of course, uh, means solving a lot of problems for actual co-installability. Uh, we, we had timestamps that GZ inserted into the change log Debian GZ, so these two files would be different, which would mean per our rather strict definition, DPKG wouldn't uh, allow you to do a co-installation with that. And so there was a lot of really great work that went, uh, went into that to make this possible. And I think it's fair to say, with this scope, it was solved. Yeah, we uh, all, all the people that that over the year have uh, over the years have have been um, working hard to create a spec that the Debian and the Ubuntu archive could actually transition to. Uh, with that scope uh, that we started out with system works as designed. Yeah. Really, again, great thank you to everybody who was involved in that. I know it was a long and painful process. Now, we have this nice multi-arch system and we want to do fun and fancy and cool stuff with it in new exciting directions. Um, we just talked about uh, building cross-compilers and uh, making the building of cross-compilers uh, easier in, in the buff, uh, before this one um, by actually using a full archive and saying, well, if I have this for an architecture, but I know there's already a compiled libc in the archive for that architecture, um, why should I need to cross-build that just to get my cross-build tool chain working? Um, We've also been talking a bit about partial architecture. Uh, MinGW came up as, a, as an example that would most certainly be partial earlier. And uh, people have just, while deploying multi-arch and, and converting their packages to multi-arch, have been um, finding some interesting problems around the embedding of interpreters and so on. Uh, I will talk later about some of these problems, uh, or we will talk together, hopefully. Uh, but, yeah, the the problem is a bit that we define multi-arch in terms of the implementation spec, yeah, um, which is a very formal spec. Uh, I heard earlier, yeah, too much mathematics. Um, in my opinion, I would say maybe not enough mathematics in there. But, uh, yeah, as as we have it, um, we have these three classes of packages with multi arch this, multi arch that, and it's really hard to reason about. Yeah, it's, it's hard to uh, build or have have your own mental model about uh, a bunch of packages be really consistent. Yeah. So what I'm proposing is, before we change anything. Uh, before we say we, we need to solve uh, stuff differently, before we uh, start hacking on DPKG again, um, let's work on our term terminology. Let's uh, talk about it in a different way, and then hopefully our mental model will change with that. And uh, this is something that I don't only want to address to the few people who understand the multi-arch uh, spec who were in, in the BOF on Tuesday discussing about possible futures. This is something I think that uh, hopefully every DD will find helpful uh, if we start discussing our problems in, in a more consistent terminology uh, we should be able to uh, come up with be better solutions for, for each uh, small problem we might face there. Um, so instead of enumerating our three use cases, what, what are we actually trying to describe? Two things. One, one is a pack per package flag. The maintainer has reviewed this package and declared that it should be co-installable. Yeah, this package is co-installable with itself. 
as far as we know. Uh, so DPKG will even attempt to do that. That's the one thing, uh, one information we want to know about each package. And then we have a bit more graph theory stuff, which I will get to in a second. And that unfortunately is a subset of mathematics. But graph theory as we need it is pretty simple. We have three packages. We have, um, these are called nodes in graph theory. Each package is a node. And uh, we have a, a depends on relationship. So far, so easy. Uh, the depends on relationship in, in a graph um, uh, creates what is called an edge. Yeah? Uh, uh, to be exact, a directed edge. Yeah? So we, we know uh, package A has something to do with package C. It depends on it. And uh, what we actually want to do next is to um, think about it in terms of we have properties of these edges. Namely, this uh, dependency, this one specific dependency, can be satisfied by packages of the same architecture, packages that provide the same ABI. Yeah? This is a dependency that uh, does actual um, C-style method calls. Yeah? or using some, some C++ calling convention or whatever. Or this dependency can be satisfied by packages of any ABI, because the API that we're using is actually just uh, call uh, user bin whatever with the following parameters. Yeah? So we expect that a API to be consistent uh, across all architectures. Yeah. Um, so that would be an edge property or a notation or in, in mathematical gra graph theory this is uh, sometimes also uh, known as coloring. And of course this is still a bit of an implicit information even if we say only the same ABI. We could get really explicit and say a package um, of architecture AMD64 has this dependency and this dependency can only be uh, be solved by uh, another package of AMD64. Why the uh, distinction between implicit and explicit is, uh, I will come back to that a bit later. So what does our nice multi-arch field actually mean then? First, as I said, package is co-installable with itself. And then, if we look at it like that, um, uh, for, from from uh, graph this graph theory point of view, we will actually say, well, this package <coughs> exports, it should say, <laughs> sorry, uh, exports interfaces that are architecture dependent or architecture independent or both. Yeah? So a package can say, at the moment, using the, just the current system, all incoming edges yeah, or, or reverse dependencies, um, have to be from the same architecture or have to be from any architecture, um, or we can have one or the other. <coughs> so why am I proposing this and standing in front of a, a bunch of Debian developers talking about graph theory? I th really think it helps uh, me and others that I've talked with also, to um, to sort your thoughts or to sort also our collective thoughts about this premise, because the the other problems that that have shown up since then are hard. And um, I've always heard like, ah, if you have this exact specific problem, then just create a wrapper package uh, with um, architecture like that and uh, multi arch like that and. I always have a trouble have trouble wrapping my head around that um, because we're phrasing the problem in in terms that are really unintuitive. So I'd like to propose that we all try to to think about it more in in terms of what are the actual dependencies that we're trying to describe and that that we're trying to solve. <coughs> 
The con, of course, is after we've described it like this, we still need to append to our email uh, or something uh, a description how to solve it with it within the current system. Or it's not possible to solve this use case within the current system. Let's solve it uh, in the future with a different system by, ex by may maybe sometime um, expanding DPKG. Sorry. <coughs> A bit more, a uh, few more ideas um, in this frame of reference. Um, yeah, we could start doing, if we change DPKG at all, we could start doing explicit architecture annotations that just would make the uh, solving um, a, the, the solver a bit simpler in, in many cases. But there are some cases where at the moment we have. Uh, like still an IA32 libs package that's arch any and only ever installed in, on AMD64 as far as I, I can tell. And then it depends on an IA32 libs i386 package which uh, is only built on i386 but never actually used there because it's just for uh, both these packages are, are just for describing this cross architecture relationship, yeah? forced cross-architecture thing. Um, so if we start changing stuff around, uh, and I'm not saying we will, I know that changing DPKG is a long and hard process, but if we do that, we might um, try to, to go for explicit, explicit annotations here. Um, for um, for thinking about possible problems, it might make sense to re reinterpret or redefine for yourself that architecture all packages as a union of or a package that is installable on uh, all archi all different architectures. And once you've installed one of the architectures, you have installed all of, all of the architectures. That simplifies the reasoning a bit, but is not really that important for the discussion. Uh, that we we have from here, um, we w we might need to propagate dependency information along the graph, so for multiple action uh, uh, edges, um, and or we yeah I will show an example of that a bit later. And we might uh, also, if we stay with a system where we describe packages in term, terms of interfaces they export, we might also annotate these interfaces, also with the uh, um, architecture information. So that is first my request to everybody. Um, if it makes sense for you, Try to phrase your uh, your multi-arch problems a bit in in terms of graph term terminology. Um, I hope that will make our understanding of the problem space and our discussions uh, more productive. Any questions so far? Okay. So then I thought I'd uh, use the rest of my time to give a quick outlook. So as I said, there, there was a buff on Tuesday uh, discuss discussing some um, of the harder multi-arch problems. Uh, we sat down and allowed ourselves also to do some green grass thinking and said, uh, well, we have a bunch of problems if we were designing multi-arch uh, completely from scratch. Uh, how would we go about it? Um, or how, what would we like to have to, to uh, really yeah, solve this problem once in a really beautiful way? Yeah. Um, some of the solutions we came up with would need a modified DPKG, maybe even DAC. Uh, some don't, but I thought it 
might hopefully be interesting for for uh, everybody who d who couldn't at attend that both to get a um, short overview of where the discussion is at within the Debian pro uh, project. Um, two related problems that we came up with is uh, fake root and NSS. Um, people might just as a normal user ha actually have uh, experienced the NSS problem that maybe you install lib MSS MDNS for a uh, local hostname lookup within Avahi, but you only install it for your MD64. And uh, if you have a binary that runs on i386, it cannot actually load that NSS module because you haven't told it to install also for i386. So we have just something in the system saying, well, it would be nice to have an NSS module. And uh, some other process uh, yeah, running in, in uh, i386 and not, uh, yeah, not being able to actually make use of that. Fake root is similar. It's a problem that will affect more the developers. Um, so we have uh, fake root as architecture all. Lib fake root is built for many architectures. And as you probably will be aware, fake root is just a wrapper that sets LD, pre LD preload. Yeah. So it, it will tell the processes running uh, under it to, uh, to preload the library that does all the, m the uh, moving around of actual open calls. Yeah. But if you are maybe building for i386 and uh, there's uh, something generated uh, in your package that's run at build time and it's been compiled for i386, you cannot actually LD preload because your lib fake root might be missing in, in the i386 version. <coughs> Another a uh, problem that has been discussed since uh, November, I think, also on a number of Debian mailing lists and uh, rears its head repeatedly is the embedded interpreters thing. So an application, let's say gedit, embeds uh, an interpreter or library version of an interpreter. For example, here I talked about libperl. Libperl is built for, for a number of architectures. Libperl um, has possibly dependencies directly or indirectly, or gedit has a dependency on a certain Perl module so that a gedit plugin can, can be loaded. This Perl module is uh, also possibly um, an arch all, all package because it only contains Perl code. But this Perl module, again, depends on a different Perl module. Uh, which is arch any because it's uh, built from C code. So now we have the situation that uh, the gedit that I install uh, must match ver some somewhere very far down the dependency chain a uh, Perl module. Yeah? And if I just um, if I just uh, have that XS-based Perl module installed. Um, to solve the dependency, I s have completely lost the information that we have a arch architecture dependency between the application very far above, gedit, and the actually loaded Perl module. Yeah. <coughs> so this is a bit of a a transitivity problem. Yeah? We have the dependencies between the, these different things and uh, the information, um, well, this, this dependency is actually wanted for this and this uh, architecture needs to travel with the dependency information. Yeah, Colin. Uh, sorry, I just want to, I just want to go back this is on. Uh, I just wanted to go back to your uh, to your comments about the um, 
uh, about the you know the general graph theoretic underpinnings of uh, okay. of multi arch and uh, uh, and our are handling the whole thing. Um, I would like to, I would like to say that from my from my memory of the original um, design discussions around multi arch, uh, we uh, we were certainly aware that there were that there were many properties that were yeah. essentially edge based. Um, however, the uh, one thing that I think you haven't really taken into account here is that the number of edges in the Debian system is very significantly greater than the number of nodes. Uh, the yep. um, you know it's probably somewhere between n log n and n squared. I suspect a lot. I haven't actually looked at the looked at the data for that. Um, and uh, it would be we considered it a very bad idea to make people annotate all of the edges. Um, we considered it a very bad idea to make people annotate all of the edges simply because there's so much more metadata involved there. Um, and the uh, I, I would, I would, I think, defend the uh, the decision to uh, put most of the information on nodes where possible, because uh, just because that has better defaulting kind of semantics and uh, has a, has a better chance of making things work by default. Uh, now you're right that there's some additional reasoning that needs to be done in that case, but uh, but I think that is worth it. Um, the uh, I. We certainly need to have some capabilities to uh, to have edge-based annotations. So we have things like the depends colon any on uh, on multi-arch allowed, uh, which is which is one case one restricted case of that. Um, and uh, I can I can see arguments for for extending that. Um, I, I haven't quite puzzled out whether you're saying that we should convert all of the annotations that we currently have to be explicitly edge-based. Um, it wasn't very clear from what you were saying earlier. No, I am saying that you should uh, convert them in your head. Uh, that when you're reasoning about the system, uh, just relying on, I depend on something, and this declares some multi-arch field, and then DPKG will invoke some reasonable defaults, just uh, does not scale to all the edge cases we have in our dependency trees. Yeah. Um, for the problem of uh, should all these dependencies uh, be explicitly mentioned in the packages file, yeah, the one one of the um, points against doing that at the time was it would bloat the packages file too much, and I'm still not convinced that gzip wouldn't uh, eat most of that overhead up, but. Physical size, it's that there is a cognitive cost associated to people who have to read all of those rep repetitive annotations. And the more that you can do by default, the more people can read the content that's actually different rather than uh, the content that's just repeated lots and lots and lots. Um, I, I, I don't know about you, but I read, I actually do read packages, metadata quite a lot. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, it is for human I'm consumption. I'm of the as opinion actually that, that the tool chain, um, if, if we uh, were to say every, and I'm not saying we have to, but if I, we were to say every uh, dependency must be declared explicitly, I'm still thinking that the tool chain should create the the part line in the packages file so okay. that you don't don't do it in the control file all right, the time I'm, I'm talking about reading the output as well as reading the input yeah uh, which i do okay quite a lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for you <laughs> then but uh, uh, but, I, but the, the yeah. people who do this quite a lot are exactly the people that everybody complains about being overloaded so if you're proposing to overload them further by making no, it harder No, I'm not to proposing to, to, to overload on, them further. <laughs> I'm saying that the the norm, normal standard DD is uh, at the moment has trouble describing corner cases that she or he encounters sure. using just the multi-arch field. There was another question over there. Yeah, please observe that the problems we are currently facing are inherently not edge-based. So by moving the specification of what is uh, architecture-dependent or where architecture barriers are to the edges, we gain exactly nothing in this respect. So for the fake root and libSS modules, uh, we have exactly the case 
that the architecture matching does not occur on dependencies but on a different kind of relation. And in this uh, example you're giving over here, it's the very same case that it's not a dependency where it's traveled, it's a dependency path. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying just putting that into uh, just putting depends on Arch AMD sixty four uh, into one certain uh, dependency solves anything. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying that uh, what we are trying to do is solve these problems, and I'm gi just giving some examples. W you were at the BOF. Uh, you, you know that uh, the ideas we, we've had about solving these problems. And uh, to solve these problems, uh, we first must be able to state them well. Yeah, And that's what's missing at the moment. Actually, one excellent thing that somebody could do with who has um, some kind of uh, interface design skills uh, would be to to write uh, some kind of visualizer where you could uh, plug in a set of without having to mess about configuring apt and getting your exact right setup, which mm. can, which can be quite challenging. Uh, being able to plug in a a set of you know. Um, Effects control data and say what what's the result of this? Which which packages are installable? What happens if uh, what happens if I select this package here? Um, something that could uh, that could be used to assist people in in reasoning about this would I think be very valuable. That's an excellent idea. Yeah, um, I would like to include the others that were not at above um, into what what we've been discussing uh, and I think uh, then we should open it up to everybody. So this was an error case uh, we one could say if with the current system, yeah, something that we're not able to uh, to solve at the moment, yeah. And just to get back to my proposed terminology, um, the question of dependency nativity is something that actually cannot just be written onto one edge. Yeah, it's uh, it's a problem that needs some sort of uh, transitive looking at it for solving it. Yeah. Currently, with the current DPKG and so on, we cannot describe that cleanly. We have a nice bunch of hacks around that. Uh, but it would be nice to find some some way to to describe that at least on on a high level for us as as uh, DDs. It doesn't have to be po possibly doesn't have to be on on a DPKG level, but it might also make sense to do that. So um, I'll quickly go through the solutions that were proposed, and if you're unclear on one of those, ask, and I will direct your questions <laughs> to the team that was at, at the BOF. Um, the first really simple solution is yeah, um, all Arch, all packages that are affected, for, uh, some Perl module that depends on native Perl modules, uh, mark them as Arch any and multi Arch same. That solves it, solves the problem, as even the one with the gedit. Uh, it means we have a huge increase in archive size um, because I think our dependency tree often ends up at uh, native C code. <laughs> um, but it's a very simple solution, but one of the things that I would describe as a hack around the current system. Yeah. <coughs> then it was discussed to have a um, Field uh, install for the same architecture as libpurl. Yeah, so if our gedit depends on libpurl, we know that we have a libpurl of the same dependency as gedit, and uh, libpurl will uh, be installed in three architectures maybe. So any module that could be loaded by libpurl and contains native C code also has to be installed in these exact, exact three architectures. And then we have uh, from uh, April, I think, we have a, a proposal by Helmut, 
where that is about calculating a set of running architectures for every package, yeah, even arch all packages, yeah, uh, go through the dependency trees, look at um, for for each package, look at uh, for which of my uh, which of the possible architectures are all my dependencies cleanly satisfied, and uh, even store that persistently. So y if you have a um, cyclic graph or something, you still can do this calculation. Um, yeah, that is rather a big change, but I think this or something like is, is probably what we'll have to do in the long run, from, from my feeling. Are these three proposed solutions clear or question? Yeah, I think we have a we might have a slight refinement to the la to the details of the last, which um, we'll okay. probably pro we'll probably bring that up in the next um, mm -hmm. session, I guess. Next Not too much for okay. sure. Um, the uh, one one thing I'll one thing I'll say is that um, the more I look at the XS kiss, the less I'm convinced that's actually a problem because uh, the XS modules depend on Perl. So um, I'm. I think that may have been an analysis mistake in thinking that that was actually a problem, but uh, there are other there are other kinds of situations where the yeah. same thing arises. Yeah, I I think if we just limit the scope to XS and uh, libfailed root kind of situations, if that's all what we want to do, then this uh, middle solution might might actually be. Superior. But like. The exact reason why it depends on Perl is why I cannot cross compile my other modules which depend on that module because then the wrong Perl is being installed. <laughs> that that's with current Perl, yes. Yeah. Okay. So. I think we should be a bit more precise about problems and solutions because there are currently two problems and the presented solutions uh, only solve uh, sometimes one of them. So. The one problem is yes, sorry, that, was unclear. Uh, that we have this transitivity issue where architecture specifications need to travel across architecture all package dependencies. And the other issue is uh, that we ha need to have libraries like libNSS modules and fake root libraries installed without even knowing what is going to use them later on. Mm. So these are distinct problems over there. And the very first solution only solves the transitivity issue. It doesn't solve uh, the missing lib fake root for NSS modules. And so we need to evaluate each of the options against both of the problems. Uh, also, the third uh, prob uh, solution with running architectures only solves the transitivity. It doesn't touch the fake root issue at all. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Uh, this should have been clear. This slide only. Uh um, is in relation to the slide before with the Perl problem. Um, you t you're sh um, right that the first solution will, will solve the transitivity problem uh, at a, in my opinion, unacceptable cost uh, in complexity, complexity. But the third solution will solve the transitivity problem at the cost of getting a page into DPKG which might also be a pretty high cost, I don't know. Um, I will leave you, yeah, we, we have five minutes, so I will leave you with uh, one problem we also came up with, uh, which is that a package uh, has dependencies on both interpreters, uh, Perl and Python, one of them as, as libperl, uh, the other as a Python interpreter, but it doesn't care which one. Yeah, and as I said before, well, Perl and Python actually both export two kinds of interfaces. Yeah, and so for Perl we're using a native C C style interface. Uh, for Python we're using a, a a command line interface or something. Yeah, and uh, when we get into that. Uh, Deep of of deeply the into the problem space, 
we need uh, and and we want to solve this mathematically really clearly and, and nicely we actually need to partition the dependency trees and uh, so that the for example for the running archer solution uh, we don't end up with an empty set of possible running arches for the uh, actual application A. Yeah? So uh, we would need a way to describe uh, using grouping or something else would need to describe a way to say um, well the the running arches for Perl and the running arches for Python uh, can be um, disjunct. The, the both set, two sets. That is uh, something to discuss <laughs> uh, more in detail, possibly in the next buff. I don't know what uh, Wookie wants to concentrate on. Um, yeah, for me, it's important to get everybody else who's interested in into this discussion. Um, do you have questions so far? Do you have an error case or use case that uh, we have not discussed yet? I uh, see so you, you have um, looked on the uh, on, uh, on the graph uh, on the the, the Jipka, PKG and apt's uh, view, uh, uh, but uh, um, uh, running programs don't know about uh, packages. They know only about what's on the file system. And if uh, a program tries to uh, enumerate uh, um, possible uh, um, uh, plugins, for example. Mm. Then it then I, it uh, will see um, modules that uh, it it cannot use. Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, and uh, I, uh, I uh, quite don't uh, don't see any solutions here other than uh, a, a variant of the solution one uh, you uh, um, you mentioned uh, with. Every such uh, module uh, put into a, a multi arch um, directory. Yeah. That, so that would be the solution I would recommend yeah. in all such cases. Yeah. Well, um, uh, if um, uh, the archive size is a problem, then, then uh, uh, they could be um, duplicated in some way because uh, the, 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 this package uh, is identical for all purposes other than, uh, than the, um, the directory. But no, it will not be the same because you only care about the, for example, compiled extensions and compiled modules and compiled plugins, and there will be by definition already ABI specific. No, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, arch all uh, modules that uh, depend that might depend on. So right, and for example, in Python, it can have the same location for both arch all plugins and arch any plugins or extensions and it enumerates both so yeah but, uh, but if uh, it and uh, then you have the transitive problem of where the yeah, arch all depends plugin depends on further plugins which end up being yeah. So, uh, what I'm thinking about is put is put putting uh, all uh, uh, AMD 64 uh, modules uh, in the uh, without the, uh, both uh, Arch all and Arch AMD 64 into one directory and all I uh, 386 uh, into another possibly with 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 some links to to um, the duplicate them but uh, this uh, way uh, a running program uh, would uh, know what what it uh, can run i think there are multiple ways to 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 get around that um for example in, in in python we already name these extensions uh different so we have uh, for an amd64 extension we embed the multi arch name into the extension so uh we we don't have this problem there and I could imagine that that for for other plugin systems or module systems, you could do the very same. Uh, or for Perl, you could just add all um, well uh, architecture dependent uh, library passes uh, to the default Perl inter interpreter and, and see uh, well just discard some at at runtime. Yeah, well, okay. uh, whether it is um, in, in, the, in the file name or the directory name, well, uh, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah, it's but the it's same a effect. runtime package which should handle runtime exceptions. I understand the problem, but you will have runtime exceptions. I can write a file which is pure shell, which will not manage to succeed to run on any of the architectures because of the embedded, you know, 
things I do with it, right? Yeah. And that's something you will have to handle. If you do write Python module, say import C strings, this is an arch all module which should run on any native system, but it may or may not run if you try to embed it in another application and you're back to the same transitive problem. This is not a different problem from the transitive dependency yeah. problem. Okay, the, the video team has signaled uh, us that uh, the time is over, so we need to at least yeah. cut out the stream. And uh, I invite you to keep discussing this. Uh, we can get, get some fresh air for the next 10 minutes and then Wookie's uh, Bob will have a very similar topic. So it, it's identical, in fact, uh, in content. So we can um, pick it up again there. <laughs> so yeah. thank you. You're now given a short chance to escape, ah, but there'll be more. <laughs> okay.